My talk is about whether your back pain could be something different from what you think it is, such as sciatica or an L4, L5, or an L5, S1, or is it something worse and is it arthritis? These are my disclosures. I wanted to thank Bill for all the nice things he said about me. Uh, basically, we have worked together for a long time. Uh, we, you know, we almost like siblings now. We fight like siblings. We make up, and but we have a shared vision of really bringing a different quality of care. And I think uh, what Bill has taught me is really this whole new field of regenerative medicine, which he talked about, where we using, where he uses. I mean, he's a leader in this in the United Arab Emirates and across the region. He's teaching people, where he's taught us to use patient's plasma, you take your own blood and use your plasma or use your stem cells. And he's been injecting in various joints, including the spine and having great results. And, you know, uh, Bill and I have published several papers together on this in the, in the area of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, but it's a very exciting field. And, you know, you can contact him. I'm sure he's on social media and on, um, and on the internet uh, to ask your questions of him. So I'm going to talk about, first of all, when we say if your back pain, is your back pain inflammatory? Is it caused by arthritis? When we talk about arthritis in the back, we're talking about a condition called spondyloarthritis or ankylosing spondylitis. But before we go so far, I want to talk about joints. Joints in the body, we have about 200 joints in the body. You have a bone and you have cartilage and this the, the space between the bone has some fluid, a synovium we call this, and um, this is where you know your movement of your body takes place, the different joints. So you have 200 joints and there are more than 50 types of arthritis. But the two main categories are the mechanical or degenerative where there's wear and tear of growing older. And the only thing which can really help here is as uh, Dr. William Morell said, is exercise, core strengthening, physiotherapy, uh, and as he also alluded to, using regenerative medicine, injecting plasma or stem cells, which is having good results in the right hands uh, for this condition. The second type of arthritis is inflammatory arthritis, uh, where there is swelling and inflammation in the joint, and this is caused by cells, your own immune system, usually attacking your joints, causing fluid buildup like this, and if you leave it for a period of time, there is joint damage. So usually we know about inflammatory back, uh, inflammatory arthritis as something called rheumatoid arthritis, which affects the fingers and the knuckles with swelling in the joints, uh, which is very inflamed. And this is different from osteoarthritis in the hands. This is osteoarthritis as a, re a degenerative or wear and tear condition in the hands, whereas rheumatoid is an inflammatory condition. Similarly, in the spine, you can either have a degenerative condition where it's due to just bone overgrowth or the disc problem or disc prolap. We call all of these mechanical or degenerative conditions. So they sort of grouped into one thing. So we'll talk about a patient I saw. He's a 35-year-old man and he's had back pain for a very long time, seven years. He's seen by an orthopedic doctor five years ago, told he has a slip disc at L4, L5. And as many doctors would tell him, he's been asked to have surgery. He's had multiple painkillers um, and physiotherapy, which gives him some temporary benefit, but it keeps going on. And he's seen many orthopedic surgeons. But his characteristic of his pain is that his pain is worse in the morning and he's an IT professional. And after he sits long at the computer, he sits for many hours, uh, he has pain, he has stiffness when he gets up from his computer and needs to walk around. And he also wakes up sometimes at three o'clock or 4 a.m. due to pain. And he has morning stiffness when he gets out of bed for one hour. Sometimes some good days he has morning stiffness for only one hour for half an hour, but consistently morning stiffness and pain, which is worse with inactivity. So since you've already listened to Dr. William Morell's talk, you know that this patient, this person has inflammatory back pain because he's worse with rest and he's better with moving around. He gets better during the latter half of the day. Dr. Morell has already talked about what's the difference between inflammatory back pain and mechanical back pain. And about 15% of back pain is inflammatory in nature. Most of the back pain is mechanical. So we actually have criteria to diagnose it. You can look at this last box on the right. Uh, age of onset of the back pain is usually young men and usually less than the age of 40, but it can also affect women, anybody, less, usually in a younger age group. It starts slowly. That's what's called an insidious onset. It starts slowly and creeps up on you. It improves with exercise and it does not improve with rest. And there is pain at night when lying down 
or uh, early morning when you just wake up for about an hour, the pain is worse. So back pain can be due to arthritis. This is called spondylar arthritis and what we used to call ankylosing spondylitis in the past, but there's some, some technical differences in the nomenclature. So these days we just use this term spa or spondylar arthritis. And in spondylar arthritis, as I said, ankylosing spondylitis, then there's an undifferentiated type. There's a type of arthritis which can affect your spine associated with a skin condition called psoriasis, and that's psoriatic arthritis. Some people have inflammation in their bowel with blood in their stools, diarrhea, uh, Crohn's disease, and ulcerative colitis, and they can have pain too. And very commonly, we see people who have an acute infection, and they have severe back pain, which is worse in the morning, stiffness, et cetera, and that's reactive arthritis, and that can usually get better. So these are the different types which could fall under the umbrella of spondylar arthritis. And in this spa, we, we classify them mainly into two categories. This class, this is axial spine and sacroiliac joint involvement or peripheral, which is the arthritis in the joints here, the shoulder, elbows, knee, ankle. And a lot of times we'll see this kind of mixed involvement as well. Now the real danger of ankylosing spondylitis or spa is these ligaments which run across along the side of the spine can have inflammation there. And sometimes in the end, it causes this bamboo spine appearance where the vertebra, one bone to the other gets fused and you have very little mobility in the spine. So here again, I have a little picture. Just stay with me and have some patience to understand the sequence of what happens in ankylosing spondylitis. You see here in the picture, there is bones and you have inflammation at the corner of the bone. So this is what it is in this diagram. This is the inflammation at the corner of the bone. And after some time, this inflammation eats into the bone. And as part of the repair process here on the right, new bone forms and they start, these new bones start growing towards each other and then fusing, causing the bamboo spine. So one bone, the vertebra, the gap between the two uh, vertebra is bridged by this new bone formation. And this causes the problem of bamboo spine and it, it you know it can occur from the top of the cervical spine right to the bottom and cause extreme disability because the movement and mobility of the spine is completely affected so this here shows a man who's bending forward he can bend but he's not bending from the spine at all the spine is straight there's no flexion there and all his bending is happening from his hips because the spine has become fused um, also, if, it, if you stay for a long period of time, you can see there's no curvature in the back here and his hips are sort of uh, contracted, contracture of the hip and knee joints. There's some deformities here as well because this ankylosing spondylitis can affect not only the spine, but the hip and knee. So we really want to get patients early because we have great treatments for these conditions and we just need to get you before uh, all this bamboo spine, etc., cetera, ha happens. Uh, and we need to recognize this early based on this whole idea of inflammatory back pain. Other things which can occur in spa is this recurrent inflammation in the eye, uveitis this is called, where the eye becomes red, inflamed, and there can be blurring of vision. Sometimes we see these things called sausage toes or sausage fingers, where there's swelling of the finger or the toe. Also, sometimes just one single joint can get swollen, like a right knee can become extremely swollen and painful. And commonly we see this thing called enthesitis, where a tendon, where it attaches to the bone can get inflamed. And this can cause a persistent tendonitis, either in the ankle, in the heel, pain at the bottom of the heels, a persistent tennis elbow, your elbows paining persistently, or your shoulder, these are all features. Some people also have psoriasis, which is a skin condition, or nail changes like this associated with this type of arthritis. Now, usually what we do for a patient who comes like this with this kind of history, we get an X-ray of the pelvis and we look at this joint here, the sacroiliac joint. In this X-ray, it's normal. In this X-ray, it's not normal where we don't see the joint there at all and it is fused. And sometimes we can see in the spine, the bamboo spine, which I showed earlier, but often we get an MRI. I mean, if it's an early stage, the x-ray may not show anything and we get an MRI of the sacroiliac joints and we see changes around the sacroiliac joints which help us make the diagnosis. 
A lab test can also be ordered. Some patients, about 60 to 70% of patients who have ankylosing spondylitis or SPA will have a positive HLA B27, which is a genetic marker for this type of arthritis and can also have high ESR and CRP, which are markers of inflammation in the blood. And as I already mentioned, the X-ray, the MRI, et cetera, and sometimes we use ultrasound of the joints. So to treat this condition, I cannot emphasize enough, enough education, understanding your condition, understanding the need for exercise. We usually say exercise, which helps to move the spine. Um, uh, as ge uh, general exercises like swimming is excellent for the back. Core muscle strengthening, like Dr. William Morell explained, if you strengthen your abdomen and your back muscle, the core muscles need to be strengthened. And this can be done with a good physiotherapist. All of these are ex extremely important. Now, anti-inflammatory drugs are used, and this really helps to reduce inflammation. These are like the painkillers like um, diclofenac, et cetera, naproxen, but these cannot be used long-term because we like to use them for a few months, but long-term they can cause side effects on the liver and kidney, so we like to stop that. So if these don't work and if the physiotherapy don't work, we do go on to new, newer drugs uh, called the biological therapies. I did change my uh, slide here, but it's not been shown. So there are biological treatments, which are injections, which block either TNF or block interleukin-17. And these have been approved, very powerful medications, which have been approved to decrease the inflammation of the um, of the um, arthritis and you know can prevent joint damage and disability so here it is biological dmart which <clears throat> include anti-tnf and anti-interleukin 17 these are medications which block certain chemicals which are being overproduced in this condition called tnf and il 17 and they have great outcomes so in conclusion, back pain can be due to arthritis. This arthritis is because of an overactive immune system, which could be due to a genetic predisposition, such as an HLA B27 gene. If left untreated, it can lead to bamboo spine and great disability. Do not ignore persistent back pain if it's more than several weeks, especially if your pain is worse with inactivity, if your morning stiffness greater than 30 minutes, if you wake up from sleep due to pain, if you have swelling in your other joints, if there is psoriasis, eye inflammation, or bowel inflammatory disease. And Dr. William Morell had also ex uh, mentioned the other red flags for back pain, which, you know, if you're having numbness, any bowel or bladder problems, you can't control bowel or bladder. If there is numbness in the legs or pain radiating down, if the pain wakes someone up from sleep, that's a red flag sign. 